Hello and welcome to Aviadev Insight Africa, the podcast offering a window to the world of African aviation with your host, John Howell, CEO and founder of Aviadev Africa. Today, I'm joined by Peter Knight, OBE, the CEO of Wild Africa Fund, who is using the power of media and influencers to drive awareness of wildlife conservation across Africa and the globe. Peter was introduced to me by a mutual acquaintance, Will Travers, the founder and executive president of Born Free Foundation. Will and I have been working together for a few years now in the field of conservation and also animal reload from, from Europe to Africa specifically. Now, Peter has got a unique offer for any airlines or airports listening that would like to take advantage of the incredible video footage of the wild African landscapes. And that's what we're going to find out a little bit more about today and a bit more around exactly what the environment is for, for, for the fund and how it all came to be. So welcome to the podcast, Peter. Thank you. Great to be here. And for those of you watching on YouTube, you'll see this incredible view behind Peter. He's down there in, in Cape Town. Which bit of Cape Town are you in, Peter? It's actually Bantry Bay, which is a, a beautiful little bay uh, that avoids the worst of the wind down here in Cape Town. But I look out every morning, I have a changing landscape and it's spectacular and sea lions and really beautiful part of the world. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. I love, I love it down there. And anybody is a bit of a random suggestion, but I remember watching this film on Netflix called my octopus teacher. And I think that's yes. set down there somewhere yep. looking for something to watch this weekend. Oh, there we go. Those guys. Yeah. It's an amazing, yeah. it's an amazing story yes. and, and very powerful in terms of the wildlife link as well. Let's kick off. Now I'm going to put a link to the video, which introduces the fun because imagery really, as we all know, is the best way to explain the absolute power and the incredible nature of African flora and fauna, but expand on what the fund was set up to do and what it aims to achieve. Sure. We, we're aiming to be the, the best environmental communicator in the African continent. And right now there's a gap as we see it. You've got like your lovely high end discovery and national geographic and BBC wildlife stuff that, that's on cable. But for the majority of Africans, they don't have access to wildlife viewing. And at the same time, in many countries, wildlife has been seen as something for international tourists, but not for the local people. And so what we're trying to do is popularize conservation across Africa, make more Africans feel it's relevant and important to them through communication, through working with a lot of influencers from musicians to religious leaders, to actors, politicians even, dare I say it, uh, to try and get people more engaged with conservation, understand both the, the problems that are going on and also the solutions that are out there and also the tremendous benefits, particularly economically. And I'm here in South Africa is probably the country that makes the most out of wildlife on the continent in every different shape and form, whether it's wildlife products or people coming down here for tourism. I think the stat is 80% of people coming to Africa come to see wildlife primarily. And so if you look after your wildlife, you're guaranteeing getting more tourists. And so that's what we're trying to push. We see tourism as an integral part of conservation to support the funding and the political will to protect these animals, but also to enable people to better their lives and to, to benefit from the conservation and the tourism industry. Wow, fantastic. Yeah, I think it all starts with communications and, and actually understanding getting people involved. What we it's the push pull factor, right? So you want people to go, I've seen this, how can I get involved? Rather than being told you have to get involved. When somebody is playing an active part in that, then it, it really works. And I've seen this firsthand in Uganda and Rwanda with the local communities and the gorilla conservation side of things as well, where they're benefiting economically and they're getting jobs created as a result of this and they're being part of this rather than, hey, this is nothing to do with you. This is for the international tourists, that kind of approach. Absolutely. And then there's an emerging middle class here in Africa. And most of those people tend to go to Dubai on vacation. It's, you're crazy. You've got like the best national parks on the planet, the best wildlife on the planet. It's right there. But it hasn't really been marketed to the black community here. And it hasn't really that if you try and get stock footage of black people on safari, it's really hard. Uh, and yet many mm. more people can afford to do it now. There are cheaper. And obviously within countries, there's discounts available, which people are not aware of. So that, for example, Rwanda, you mentioned the gorillas. It is $1,500 for an international tourist to see the gorillas. But for a local person, it's $200. Now, that's a lot for an average Rwandan. But for those people that are going to Dubai on vacation, that is well affordable. And it's a, an experience of a lifetime. But people have to understand that. And so we've taken recently in Rwanda, we had Two-Face, who's a top musician from Nigeria, a very famous musician. And we took him to see the gorillas. And we talked about how Nigeria still has 100 gorillas left. 
Imagine if they had tourism there. In around Rwanda, there's probably 30 or 40 lodges providing jobs for people, all based on the gorillas. Wildlife is obviously, it's our duty to protect it, but it's also, if you can protect it, it can make tremendous economic benefit for countries. No, absolutely. I was actually doing some research earlier in the week and I saw this UN report that said by 2060, okay, long way away, that 40% of the African population will be middle class. And when you look at the size of the population and the growth, that could be a billion yeah. people that are middle class. Totally. And then the second trend, which you've touched on as well, which we saw hugely during COVID, is when you have your international supply of tourists cut off, you have to focus on your domestic market. And suddenly, yeah. wow, we haven't really done enough in the local market. What products do we need to create? And what I, I saw, and I worked very closely with the South African Tourism Authority during COVID, where they yeah. pivoted really quickly and they were able to create these products and create this demand. And they've wanted to keep that now because they realized that some destinations always have that, especially when it comes to the safari product. Like you say, how many local people say, oh, yeah, I've been on a safari. It's potentially limited. So I, I it's, totally agree with you on that. It's one of, one of the best parts of my job is to be able to take people. For example, I took religious leaders in Tanzania to see their first elephants. And it was a re revelation to them. And they were just all blown away from it. And they all came out all fired up, all passionate, all about wanting to protect the wildlife, but also seeing the economic benefits that can come from protecting it. It is about awakening people to what's there and what the potential is going forward. South Africa has done a great job on this. We do a lot of work with sand parks here and they have some very affordable accommodation. Literally, I think it's 60, $70 a, a night for a little cottage within the national park and people would drive in their own cars. It's very affordable, but people are not having it marketed to them. And so we've been taking mm. various local celebrities out there to see it and show people what's going on and get them engaged and realize it's a lot easier than people think. Yeah, it's a real paradox because you talk to tourism leaders, you talk to individuals at, at, at a high level and you say, OK, yeah, you're really passionate about intra-African travel and tourism. Where are you going on holiday? And they say, oh, I'm going to London or I'm going to New York. Or I'm going to Dubai. And I say, OK, okay. Look, it's very interesting. But I would also diving deeper into the aviation side of things again. This is at the moment in Africa, it's still an expensive, a very much a relatively expensive mode of travel, but there is a growing number of people traveling and the middle class is growing. So let's dive into that a little bit about what are you doing, which aviation stakeholders, I believe there's a couple of airlines mm -hmm. you're working with. Yeah. What are yeah. you doing specifically with them? What's the goal? What's the ambition? How's it going? We just partnered with Rwanda Air. I was just there a few weeks ago and we, we, we organized with them. They, we've already started working with them, bringing in some influencers from different countries and taking them to see the gorillas, et cetera, with Rwanda Air donating the flights. And then we're doing a lot of PR and social media around it. We did something with Denai Guerrero, for example, from Black Panther. I think it was like four, four and a half million people on her Instagram learning about going, seeing the gorillas, et cetera. And of course, a name call for Rwanda Air as well. But that potential is massive. There are a lot of influencers out there that are interested and coming and having these experiences. And we're a nonprofit. We, we do everything on a very tight budget. So if we can get flights donated, that helps us tremendously. We very often get lodges to donate as well because it's all publicity. It's all promotion for the industry. So Rwanda has been our main one, but we'd love to make more connections across the continent. And what we're able to do with Rwanda Air, we're putting together a special customized piece for their in-flight entertainment. So in that case, it's going to be a, a sort of four or five minute piece about somebody, one of our well-known celebrities going to see the gorillas and their journey and how great that was. And then we have 60 musicians from across the continent that have done concerts in something called Music for Wildlife. So we have a, a lot of contemporary African music, everything from gospel to Afro pop, some well-known names like CK, who had a huge hit in Europe recently. And we're working with them, taking them out on safari and doing interviews and we're talking about their music, but also talking about their experiences with wildlife, their favorite animals, in some cases, people have clans that they come from, traditional clans, the hyena clan and things like that. So they have a cultural assimilation with that wildlife. So doing pieces like that. And then we have a little short mini documentary, four or five minutes about an African conservationist called Unsung Heroes. And those are very compact, nice little documentaries which describe somebody who's a, an anti-poaching ranger, a scientist, a community worker. Uh, and we put that as a little 10 minute package all together, like a magazine piece, all branded with Rwanda Air on it, specifically for them and their destinations to give them like their own sort of bespoke little contemporary news magazine about wildlife conservation and about tourism at the same time. And so that's a model we can repeat with. We have all our editors down here in Cape Town. We can custom make for an airline a piece related to their routes and their activities 
with local musicians, so a bit of culture as well, a bit of music to mix it up, um, but also some wildlife messaging and some tourism promotion. And all that can be combined into a very nicely shot, it's all shot on 4K um, piece with the airline's branding put in. And we just supply it to the airline. It's oil royalty free. We're there to promote the conservation. It helps hopefully to promote the airline at the same time. And this is the win we've created. We're working with about 20 TV networks now. And we basically create this content for free and the networks put them out and we co-brand with them. So we're just launching with Showmax, for example, our stuff on Showmax, but we're working in Zimbabwe with ZBC, in Rwanda with the RBA, here with SABC in South Africa. So we're working with broadcasters and we also want to work with airlines because obviously that's if you're on an airplane, chances are you can afford to go on safari. And so that's a great market to be marketing for, both domestic and international, whether it's business people flying around Africa or tourists coming around when they're there. That's uh, people we want to reach and connect with. Yeah, amazing. So just so I understand this, so you would create something that's bespoke, that is really about their particular destination that they're serving, their home market, yeah. potentially, if it's a yeah. national carrier like Rwanda. And you yeah. can offer that then to them royalty-free to put on the in-flight, but also potentially play in the airport, right? They could put it... Play in the airport. I've seen we this also happen could... as well. We do, we do work with a lot of airports. We do billboards and things in airports. We work with some great billboard companies like JC Deco and Alliance Billboards across the continent. And it's, we provide high quality content with star power, if you like, beautiful imagery of the animals. And in exchange, we give great content and the distribution is done and it's a partnership and it's a win partnership. It's not, not a lot of money changing hands, but it's all about getting the message out and also promoting, getting something out of it. So the, our artists, for example, they get some money from a pay-per-view show of these shows, but then they also get their music promoted across the continent and even internationally. And from uh, and uh, so it, it is a kind of a win, and it also helps the country in terms of driving the tourism. And with Rwanda Air, for example, we'll be doing pieces about Rwanda, of course, but we'll also be doing things like to Zimbabwe because they fly to Harare. So if they've got a route that makes sense, we can do places where their routes are as well. So again, it's a symbiotic relationship, and hopefully we can switch that out. I think in, with Rwanda, we switch it out like every quarter to give them new content and change it around. And we're also providing music videos as well to some airlines. With Virgin, we've done some music videos which have a 24-minute concert and there's three minutes about wildlife in the middle of it. And for in-flight entertainment, you can listen, learn about new African artists you may not have been exposed to. Wow, this is amazing. And I've seen it and I would recommend and I'll put the links in so that people can come and see some of the quality of, yeah. the, of the content that's produced. But let's focus just a little bit more on the artists and the influencers. How do you get them? What are some, you've mentioned some of the names already, which are huge in terms of from the music industry, from the film industry. Right. What is your criteria when it comes to that? Obviously, we always go for people who have a good reputation, but basically we approach people and they're not paid. So they have to have a desire and interest. And what we like to do wherever we can is take them into the field and we cover all the expenses. We don't pay anybody any fees, but we cover expenses, obviously, if they're coming filming. I take them to have an animal experience. We just had, for example, Tu Baba, who is legendary musician, seen as the father of Afro pop. He came to see gorillas with us in Rwanda, and then he's now gone and released a pangolin back into the wild in Nigeria, doing more public awareness. And we've done a little message with him, which goes on to television, etc. In Nigeria, where we've really had our deepest media presence, we did a survey and 88% of people remembered the campaigns, and 30% of people said they were going to stop eating illegal bushmeat products, which was the goal of that campaign. So we're able to have a very big footprint, but everybody's donating their time for free, the, the networks are doing, they're putting in their time for free. We also do co-productions with some of them. So we do uh, local shows about wildlife that wouldn't get made without us coming in and supporting those productions. Yeah, so all of this is, it's quite wide ranging. And, and one thing that I wanted to pick up on, which where the aviation industry is very close, of course, and very much yeah. at the forefront, is of course, wildlife trafficking. And Africa has a particular problem when it comes to this, of course being the home of the wildlife. And we've done some work over the years with the World Wildlife Fund, and they had a program called Roots, which was all about reducing the opportunities for unlawful transport of endangered species yeah. and, and trying to create that awareness there. But is the idea here that, explain to me how this could all fit in terms of supporting to remove this wildlife trafficking problem that we've got, or at least reduce it as best we can. 
Yeah, as you said, awareness is, is crucial. And obviously, if people are on the lookout and someone's loading some animals onto your plane, we've had that before where people have reported the, the, the baggage handlers are, are aware of it. The captains, sometimes the pilots, will, will report stuff that goes on. So the airline is a crucial piece of this. And having that awareness is great and increasing that awareness. We're also working with customs in different countries. So we're working right now in Zimbabwe to have sniffer dogs at the airports to work with the baggage handlers, not just in freight, but also people coming in and out on tourism. And these dogs can detect ivory, pangolin scales and things like that. Yeah, having the public uh, and the, the baggage handlers and the airline staff aware of the situation uh, is really helpful in trying to crack down and reduce it, the problem of trafficking. Fantastic. So big question here is in terms of the funding of the fund and how it all fits together, like how does it work? Yeah. Because I can see the benefit here from the airline side and what you're looking for there, really airline airport side is more of a partnership where you say, look, you help us bring these people in, but it's not just the airline, the airport, it's also the tourist board, because of course there's the promotional yeah. element of promoting the country. So yeah. how, how do you work? You mentioned you're a nonprofit. Yeah, we, we get some money, we raise money, mainly in the United States to fund our production and stuff. And then we do work with government. So with Rwanda, for example, they waive all filming fees that we have involved like that. They give us the permits to go and film with people with the gorillas, get us the access and things like that. And then we work with them on some of their events to help them promote their events and their activities beyond what they're already doing. So in some ways, we were trying to act as a PR agency for an unpaid PR agency for the tourism boards to promote what's going on. And we're in discussions in Zambia, Namibia and South Africa. Sand Parks, for example, we're doing a whole series there. And they basically waive the fees. They make vehicles available to us. They help us with the filming. So it's a real partnership and a collaboration, all of which is saving both of us cash to get the job done for less and, and basically have a, a product which is very cost effective, but gets the word out to millions of people. Oh, that's really smart. I love this. And I love the fact I'm so grateful to Will for putting us together because I wasn't aware of it now that we are. And I know that there will be airlines. I will be sending this directly to those airline CEOs to say, yeah. you need to listen to this. You need to watch this. You need to engage. And they need to meet you as well. So hopefully you'll be with us in Bintok in June for, for Aviadev too. Yeah, no, fantastic. And I think the airlines as well, part of the, the stuff we do is we do involve business leaders. So people like Richard Branson, we work with quite a lot. But having the CEO of the airline doing a public service message for for 30 second message, we're just saying we have an entire industry which relies on our wildlife. So let's protect it together. That kind of messaging coming from the airline industry, obviously, it's one of the things, the hotel industry, the taxi, I mean, it's all these businesses which benefit from the tourism. And I, I always say to people as well, today's tourist is to tomorrow's potential investor. Because I think outside international investment, very often people will come on a tourism trip and you go to someone like Rwanda, it's very impressive, super neat and tidy, it's very organized. I can see people going there to go and see the gorillas and go, maybe I should be investing in this country. This country's going somewhere. So tourism, I think, can be beyond just the direct benefits from the, itself. I think it's the way to bring in international investment. Yeah, actually, it talks to what the purpose of Aviadev is and the reason that, say, Namibia are hosting the event is you can go and sit in Dubai and get a laptop out and show people, here is Namibia, this is what it is. Or you can actually host an event, bring people to your country, give them that experience, show them the culture, show them the wildlife, show them the experience. And they're then, if they're the right people, they're the decision makers, they're the ones that then walk away and go, we need to look at these numbers again. We need to find a way to start serving this market. We understand now what the opportunities are. And that's ultimately, that is what we're trying to do with Aviadev is, is bring people to that destination. You're absolutely right. I had that experience when we actually started our event in Rwanda in 2016. And you suddenly, you leave the country and you go, how can I get involved? How can I help? And I became a global ambassador for gorilla conservation back then. I'll be doing the London Marathon in the gorilla suit in, in seven weeks time to raise money good for job the charity. It's, good so, job it's London and not Africa. You'll be a bit hot over here, but you'll be all right. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> I'll be next. Yeah, don't hold me to that one. I don't fancy one. <laughs> altitude and in the heat but uh, yeah like it, it really does inspire people to then go ah my eyes are open now how can i get involved for sure and i think the biggest challenge for african tourism is it's always just getting people here for the first time because there's so much prejudice of people thinking it's unstable it's dangerous the food will be terrible and you vaccinate and as soon as people have come 
you know, like, oh, wow, it's cool. It's like everything's easy and often safer than some of the countries people are coming from, ironically. But once you've got people here once, in my experience, people generally fall in love with it. And they never just come once, once they've been, they'll come back again. And do it. So again, that's where we're working with people like Denai Guerrero, Lupita Nyong'o, uh, Jaiman Hunsu to promote internationally, to get more people coming in as well and just learning for themselves that Africa is potentially the next big boom. You look at what happened. I did a lot of work in China through all that economic development. And it's likely that the economic development will be more of that style than the old European 200 years development. If the investment comes in, things can change very rapidly. And so I think hopefully more investment will come into Africa to provide more jobs, which is what we desperately need. But that has, I think, tourism is the entry way to do that, to get people in, first of all, because you say you only need one executive to come in and have a look. And go, OK, this is pretty cool. And talk to people locally and find out where people are at to spark more investment. Yeah, getting investment and getting the right investment and getting the right messaging out there. I think what I'm taking away from this is that, number one, you're focused on supporting that domestic market, but also yeah. or using African voices, African people to communicate. Yeah. This is an opportunity for, for tourism in the intra-African basis, because uh, this has been a challenge for a long time that, oh, yeah, the international product for the international tourist rather than actually communicating the benefits of an African product and then having traveled the continent, it's so diverse within the continent. You don't have to leave the continent and have a different experience. You can be in the same country and have a very and, different and, and experience. You have, and you have amazing food and amazing service. Some of the, the places I've been lucky enough to go with guiding with international tourists and food is just exceptional and as good as you're going to get in Dubai or anywhere else. But people don't see it that side of it. And they also just think that, oh, it's so crazy expensive. But again, if you know the tricks of the trade and you know that the, the discounts are there and very often you can drive yourself for the first time and do it on the cheap. And then a bit later, you might want to come back and have the, a luxury experience with the cuisine and all the other elements that you might want. But in, in Rwanda, for example, in a, a good hotel, it's like $150 for a bottle of wine. So for a bottle and a glass of wine. You could go and see a gorilla. <laughs> think about that. the experience and everybody's blown away by the experience. Nobody ever forgets it. It's life changing. And that's what we want to show people and get them engaged and, and across Africa, traveling around as well. Go and have some wonderful food in Rwanda or in Zimbabwe or wherever it is. You don't have to go out the continent to get amazing experiences. No, fantastic. What I will do is I will put the link to the website in the show notes so everybody can go on the website and see what it is that you're up to. I will put in a link so that they can obviously get in touch with you as well. And we'll make yeah. sure this goes to the to the right people. But what is the best way for our listeners to find out more? These are the, the, the best channels. Yeah, I mean Go to the website. It's just wildafricafund.org and follow us on social. We do very active on social media, putting out stories from all over the continent. And something that's different about us is we're not just we're not really here for self-preservation. We're here to move the cause forward. So we cover a lot of other organizations. We feature other people's programs because to us, it's not about promoting any one organization. It's about creating the concept and support for conservation overall. And it's just about the amazing things that are going on across the continent that people can get involved in. So do follow us on social media, as well as doing the, the television stuff. We can also provide for in-flight magazines and stories as well with nice images and things like that. Again, it's all about getting the word out and uh, everybody needs content. We have content coming out of areas, <laughs> all quality, all, all nice and all relevant to the countries and, and usually with beautiful imagery. So we'd love to partner with as many airlines as we can on this. And like I said, we can put together pieces with the logo in or even incorporate their video into the production so that it's seamless um, presentation as well. Yeah, which is something I think we're looking at doing together as well, which yeah. is really exciting. Yeah. But I think okay. they'll, it will pique their interest. It will perk their, their ears will have pricked up when they hear, right, wow, fantastic. There isn't, this is a partnership and it's not just a one way sort of commercial yeah. um, side of things. So I think it's super, right. super exciting from that perspective. But yeah, thank you so much for your time, Peter. It's been great to chat thank to you. you and find out about this. And uh, yeah, we look forward to helping you push that message into the aviation market and the tourism industry as well, of course. Totally. And and, and catching up with you and having you with us in, in Namibia in, in June as well. So thank you for joining you, us. You won't want to be wearing your gorilla suit in Namibia, I can tell you. It's a little bit hot there. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. That is very true. I think once I've run in it, Peter, it's going to be only good for the recycling. I don't think I'll be, I'll be wearing it again. And I'll probably <laughs> detest it as well, but we'll see. <laughs> Fantastic.
Good luck All on right. that run. Perfect. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you everybody Bye-bye. out there for listening. If you enjoyed the conversation, please do share it with somebody in your network you think would benefit from having a listen. Don't forget to subscribe to the show. And yeah, we will see you next for the next episode very soon. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.